What is up, Watch Fam? Happy Friday, and welcome to Liquor Run. I am Christian from Theo and Harris, and you are... Roly from Theo and Harris. If you are not familiar uh, with this series, Liquor Run, uh, we sit down, we talk about watches, uh, and we, we drink a little bit of wine usually. But today, uh, uh, and we um, over, a bo over a bottle of wine, but today we're not drinking wine. Uh, what is it that we're drinking, Daddy-O? We're drinking vermouth. Italian vermouth. Italian vermouth. This I am excited about. All right, so let's get into it. All right, before we jump in, a quick wristwatch check. What are you wearing real quick? Sticking with my gold date just. And that's a very interesting, so it's a three-hand watch with a date and a fluted bezel. That That's like the Rolex, yes. you know, right? It's iconic. It's iconic, yeah. and and that's kind of that's proprietarily like owned by Rolex. You know, Perhaps, yeah. that design, you know, which is very relevant. I'm not just talking out of my ass. Very relevant to today's conversation. Uh, I am wearing an IWC, a Yacht Master. Uh, I'm sorry, not a Yacht Club, not a Yacht Master. Uh, very cool watch, automatic, but I love winding my automatics. Smooth bezel, stainless steel case, bulky, beautiful, available in the watch shop at theoandharris.com. Huge it. fan of this watch. Um, today. We're going to jump into a little conundrum. A little conundrum. I, I, I recorded a live video mm. two weeks ago. Uh, and you can you can find the link down below. Uh, in which someone asked me about, or I brought up, the Omega Globemaster. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, a, a phenomenal watch. A watch that sub-8,000 is probably one of the most valuable watches you can buy. In a price range where you know, you're know you competing with the Rolex Oyster Perpetual, which is right. a wonderful watch, don't get me wrong, probably one of the most valuable Rolexes, mm -hmm. but still, you know, a relatively you know undecorated kind of pedestrian kind of movement, mm -hmm. not something that is you know innovative as far as design, something that, that is heritage. Wonderful watch, but still heritage, okay? You got this Globemaster, this newcomer, right? This movement that is held not to COSC standard, which is which is one of, one of the highest qualities of watchmaking in Switzerland, but to METAS, M-E-T-A-S, which is Omega's in-house kind of like uh, uh, regulation. This like mm -hmm. super high, ridiculous, uh, uh, the deviations in six positions need to be super small, not just one or two. Uh, you need, hmm. you know, resistance of 15,000 Gauss, unnecessary like muscles. Right. around the movement. A really good watch. Right. But I have a little conundrum about it. Hmm. What's your conundrum? <laughs> I told you before we recorded. <laughs> He's pretending, what's your conundrum? <laughs> Steve from Blue's Clues. Uh, the bezel. Yeah. It's a, it's, it's a, it's a fluted bezel. And I mm. think that, and I think that, you know, there's a fair case to be made mm. that Omega is riding Rolex's coattails with an $8,000 watch. And I think that that's kind of lame. And at $8,000, I don't want a brand, particularly Omega, to be riding the coattails of anybody, mm. you know? So let's jump into that after we crack open this bottle of vermouth. Vermouth in Italy and Spain is a very serious thing, right? Vermouth is a, um, is a fortified wine that's mixed with bitters and, and herbs. And they make this lovely, I'm going to call it a potion, because it's to me, it's like a potion. And um, you can have it straight up. We could have it just like this right now. Right. Uh, I'm going to put a little bit more here in mine. Oh, because God uh, forbid you short God yourself. God forbid. Right? You know, I, I'm when already seeing that you know, I'm getting the short end of the stick. <laughs> and, but uh, instead of us having it straight here, right. I'm going to add a, just a dash of a sparkling soda. soda. Club soda. We use Pellegrino. Uh, just to freshen up. And if I had a little orange uh, you would throw that in there rind, well. i throw it in there, I'd light it up and get the oils going. Boom. And what a lovely drink. This is a drink that we can hang out in Milan, in Rome, and Torino. Our double-breasted jackets. Double-breasted jackets, monk strap shoes, our Vespas. Our, like, shades in the middle shades. of the night. All right, so should we stir these a little bit? Or just uh, give, it, give it a little, a little, 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 little twirl there. I hate that. Right. I hate when someone makes a drink and then stir it. You yeah. get club soda. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah, you want to stick your finger in? It's one of my biggest gripes about people. Yes. Man, how dare you not stir a drink well? You don't offer to make me a drink. You don't I make know, my own drink. I don't need you making my drink. We don't often uh, have a uh, liquor run with these types of glasses. We it's don't. Well, this nice. is our first. This is our first yeah. non-wine technically yeah. liquor run. Yeah. Well, All this right. is technically a wine. Right. A fortified right, right, wine. A fortified right. wine. Yeah. We're right. going to ease into yeah. Okay, Nazi. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> wine Nazi. Once again, you never, like, we used to do a ceremonial cheers. It's, Salud. Salud. 
And that's delicious. Absolutely delicious. That's delicious. You know what that is? Oof. Come that's on. like a, Give it's it to a me. no, no, no. That to me is like a drink. That's like the first drink of the day or, yeah, or the night. This of the day. I'm making it sound as if I drink yeah. at noon. I'm saying like this is. Hey, Dad. Like, where do you want to go for dinner? It's five Ooh, o'clock on a beautiful. Friday. We say let's let's pull over, move. Let's ease into let's ease into tonight. This this, this is, is exactly delicious. right. Hey, we've got our smoking jackets on. It's six p.m. in in this yeah. imaginary yeah. life that we haven't right. actually had to live. We've got our Gucci uh, a the slip slippers, the Princeton so slippers, a bunch of fur sticking out of them, my heel. <laughs> you sound like mom now. Uh, this is delicious, though. Delicious. So, t- so tell me a little bit more about vermouth, then we'll jump back into Omega. So yeah, so vermouth, like I said, is a fort- it's a it's a fortified wine, uh, and and uh, so the alcohol content is a little bit higher, but but vermouth. Uh, is also blended with botanicals. Okay. And that's what gives it that little, uh, I'm going to call it medicinal flavor because it does have a little bit of that. A little. A little. But but in this case, th- this particular, this, uh, this bottle how do you say that in Italian? Is it cocky or? or I cocky. Yeah. Cocky, right. Yeah. Th- this is really, really good. Mm-hmm. And uh, the Spanish also are huge vermouth lovers. Yep. And so you have it with tapas, you start it in the afternoon, you're this having a little delish. vermouth. And um, this is a There's revelation a lot going to me. On, though, in the taste. There's a that, lot going exactly on. right. This is not like drinking Cinzano. No. That's a very one dimensional vermouth. You know, so you're using it cheap. It's good for mixing. Right, delish. But if you want to meditate a little bit, this is this is, this a is lot it. Going. And I, I, you know, quite frankly, you don't have to uh, put a little soda. No, of course. Right. Not. Maybe you some, some of your readers may be say, "What are you doing?" Right. We just chose to do it. Because, right. but uh, we it's could certainly have it straight up. This is this is delicious. This How much is, is delicious. This, uh, this is like twenty bucks. So tw- you were twenty bucks, but truthfully, yeah. you have to put it in perspective. Though mm-hmm. it's not a twenty dollar bottle of wine where you kind of polish it off in a night. Yeah. I mean, this is something that no. will last far longer than a night. No, this lasts weeks. This is you know what I mean. We're gonna start our meal exactly today. You no, know, we're not tonight this, this like, way. You know, and then you move on to something else. Exactly. So, for, so for so for cost, you know, per experience, yeah. it's much oh, lower than. Oh a yeah, right, right. So put that in right. perspective here. Yeah. This is really delicious, though. I'm enjoying it. Let's jump back into mm. this globe master conundrum I have. Yeah. Okay. So let's start off by saying this. I'd like to you know stipulate that this is a wonderful watch. Yes. It's, I there is no dispute here. Okay. I also agree that the constel or that the globe master, just as Omega says. Very well may have much more heritage than the date just of the day mm-hmm. date. They say that this fluid de bezel design goes back to 1910. The mm-hmm. date just was invented in 1945. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's a big difference. Yeah. You know, 45 versus 1910. Big, big difference. But it's my contention that whether or not Omega invented the fluid de bezel or, or did it before Rolex or whatever is irrelevant. It's irrelevant. Okay. It's my opinion that the that the fluid de bezel Particularly, food to bezel three hand, you know, time only plus date watch. Mm-hmm. It's the date just. I mean, that's what it is. That's, that's the formula. Mm-hmm. I mean, the fact that anyone could dispute that to me is just madness. It doesn't matter to me, at least, as much who invented it. It's an interesting little tidbit. It's an interesting fact. But I genuinely do think that myself, as a watch enthusiast, and even more so a layperson walking into an Omega store, is going to say like. Okay, you got the bezel from Rolex. Come on, like, and then and then the Omega person is going to say, "Well, actually, Rolex got the bezel from Omega," you know, which just kind of makes you sound like I don't know the un- the uncool you know kid in the class is saying, "Oh, I- I'm the one that wore you know G- Jordans before the cool kid." Like, okay, shut up. You're not the cool kid. The, the Jordans aren't your thing. You know, I'm trying to you get, you get my kind of yeah. It I just sounds it. bratty almost. No, we invented it. Not Rolex. Mm. You know, like that just seems so like, mm. I don't know. Yeah. I think the lay person will find, hey, someone who has seen Rolex is somewhat familiar with Rolex. I mean, everyone, right? They, they'll say, they'll say uh, oh, that's a Rolex knockoff. Exactly. You kind of stole it. And no matter how much you want to spin it as Omega, no matter what you, oh no, we invented 1910, blah, 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 blah. Come on. Come on. Let's get real. That's delicious. This is delicious, you know. So that that's Ooh. that's kind of that's where I'm coming from here. I think you should buy the watch, both in design and movement, and supposedly overall construction. It's a wonderful watch, but this whole you know three hand plus date and a fluted bezel thing, I think that Omega really should rethink that decision. The fluted bezels may have existed in 1910. The fluted bezels may have reappeared in Omega in the 1950s, but Omega is not synonymous with this design. And not only that, someone else. Is so. When was the last time 
there was a fluted bezel omega. I, I don't know. From from the from the articles I read online from both the blog to watch and from Odinki, Omega Omega invented the fluted bezel in 1910 and they reintroduced in the 1950s for for a period. That's it. There's no reference to famous models in the 90s or the 80s or the 60s. Is it 10 invention, 50s, you know, reappearance. That's it. So basically, the fluted bezel, obviously, no matter who invented it, is not an integral part of the Omega history and lineup. Right. It's just not. There have been big gaps. Enormous gaps. Yeah. You know, and now, not to say that, not to say that gaps, you know, are everything. I mean, the Reverso, for example, was introduced in 1931, mm. didn't reappear again until the, what, 40s, and then again the 90s or something like that. There are enormous gaps in the history of the Reverso, but the Reverso is still the Reverso, and that's JLC. It, but yeah. this, you know, that's because when, when, when JLC was sleeping on the Reverso and not using it, no one else made it more popular. Right. No one else stole it and, and, and really capitalized on it. But while Omega was sleeping on the fluted bezel, Rolex took it. Whether they stole it or not, I don't give a shit. You know, they made it synonymous with their brand. I mean, come on. And at the end of the day, most people, and this is what I hate so much about geeks, whether that's a watch geek or a car geek or anybody, not only you know, are they not lay people, which I'm cool with. I'm not a lay person either. I love watches so much. But they refuse to acknowledge that lay people not only exist, but make up the vast majority of the population of people who will ever see, hold, and buy these watches. You know, that's my problem. It's this lack of self aware it's like this lack of awareness. Mm. Like we're not we are we're not the normal. Mm. Like, relax. The average guy walking in to Omega looking to buy his first watch, whatever, is also probably considering a Rolex. You know, Omega and Rolex are like the two competing sure. major, major brands. And he's going to say, well, come on. I mean, every Rolex in the dress line has a fluted bezel. It's like a, it's like a Rolex thing. Like, explain mm -hmm. this. And no matter what Omega says, he's going to still feel like, yeah, okay. Like, all right. Sounds good. You know. So that's my problem. Yeah. That's my, it, it, you know, and, and crucify me for it. Salute. And a look at it uh, as such a crisis. I think uh, that was a very polite way of calling me a nuts I, I think, yeah, I think, <laughs> but you yeah. get my point yeah i do yeah i'm not yeah. even angry yeah. about it no i know but and i see your point i just i just i think that to the to the f people that are really into watches i think this will be a big deal because it's sort of a bragging right right you can i don't think i don't know if it if the fluted bezel was ever patented by omega because rolex has been doing it for patent, a long time just the invention just right in fact they introduced it originally of oh, the style right um I, I mean it could be maybe their way of uh, paying homage to past generations of, uh, of, of, of Omega. Well, which is fine uh, when, when like that's your thing. Like, you know, when, when JLC mm -hmm. reintroduces a vintage JLC, it's fine, like yeah. we get it. But if JLC is reintroducing something that someone else is very much so famous for, arguably the most famous thing in watches, it just seems so obvious. You know, you can't, you know, Rolex is the one, Rolex is the one brand that can go up to another brand and say, give me my lunch money. And they're like, wait, what? That's my lunch money. He's like, no, it's mine. What are you talking about? What are you going to argue with Rolex? I mean, what, what are you going to argue with the whole world? You know, which obviously values Rolex more than almost, uh, uh, more than most brands. Right. You're not going to argue with Rolex. Come on. No, you're you know? not. I, I, again, I, th I think it, uh, I think it goes, it, it'll go back to, if you have a consumer that's looking to shop for a watch in that price, in that price range, and, and there are many people that do buy these watches that know nothing about, about of course, no. the history. Most people, most people don't. Right? They won't make it. it won't mean a, uh, It won't mean a difference. It won't mean a thing to them. They won't know, nor will they care. It does matter for the the person like yourself and even myself. Because when I saw the watch, I immediately made the, the made the the, the beeline right to Rolex. Yeah. I said, "Whoa, that's like, that looks like Rolex," and I'm not. I'm not this, know, crazy this crazy aficionado of watches. Right. So it, 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 it's going to be interesting to see how this plays out yep. with the, uh, you know, the conoscenti, right? The, those that know. Right. And, and uh, uh, it's going to be an interesting, it's going to be a fun little, little, uh, little wrestling match there. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah. I, I think that uh, a lot of people are going to walk into Omega mm -hmm. and just say, mm -hmm. all right, that's a weird thing. Yeah. You know, the last thing yeah. the runner up wants to be is mistaken for a poser. Yes. You don't want to be a poser. Right. 
You want to be? I'm fucking Omega, right? You know, this is who we are, yes. and we're better than Rolex I'm not for Rolex. these three reasons. Yeah. Well, but you can't say you're and, better than Rolex right. if you're stealing from them. Sure. That's weird. Yeah. You know, so that kind of you know, yeah. once again, this is insignificant. It means nothing. I mean, no one's gonna give a. Shit. I'm just talking about yeah, stuff. That's right. You know that that that, that watch geeks are interested in, right. and that I think that will play a role consciously or subconsciously in the brand. I don't know brand. Equity. In the brand perception. Yeah. Of you know yeah. normal people right. when they're looking at Omega, yeah, you know. So that's it. These are my opinions, uh, and I'm glad you introduced me to this beautiful bottle of vermouth. I am feeling it right now. Yeah, salute, Daddy. Good. You're empty. Good. That's a shame. Yeah, we gotta well, fix that. I know. Yeah, yeah salute, yeah. guys. Thank you so much for watching Cheers. this episode of Liquor Run. Uh, had a blast. And uh, comment in the comment section below. Follow us on YouTube. Subscribe to us on YouTube right now.